Brigham Young University presents the BYU Mars Rover Team and is designed for the 2015 Mars Society University Rover Challenge. The design team consists of undergraduate students with various engineering majors, five mechanical engineering students, two manufacturing engineering and technology students, 10 electrical engineering students, and two computer engineering students. The mechanical engineers are responsible for the design and fabrication of the rover's mechanical components, such as the chassis, suspension, wheels, and robotic arm. The manufacturing engineers work closely with the mechanical engineers on the creation of the rover's mechanical components, technical drawings of these components, and fabrication of these components. The electrical engineers are responsible for custom designing, testing, and installing the rover's power, sensory, and communication systems. The computer engineers work closely with the electrical engineers in developing the communication systems and in programming of the base station and controls. The team is sponsored by BYU's Mechanical Engineering Department and is organized by the department's capstone program. Senior mechanical and manufacturing engineering students are assigned to specific project teams and capstone assigns budgets for each team. BYU's Mars Rover team is one of these capstone projects. Dr. Eric Homer, the faculty coach assigned by the capstone department to assist the mechanical and manufacturing engineers, manages team meetings, approves expenses, and offers suggestions for the students' designs. Capstone expects the mechanical and manufacturing team members to each contribute 10 hours of work in a typical week. These efforts are led by mechanical student lead Bennett Mortensen. Dr. David Allred is the faculty liaison for the electrical and computer engineers, who participate in this project through an elective credit projects course. He manages electrical team meetings and also offers suggestions for students' designs. The electrical team, led by student lead Steven Carlson, works in parallel with the mechanical team. To fulfill their elective requirements, these team members are each expected to work three to five hours per week on the project. The mechanical components of the core rover design consist of the chassis, suspension, polyurethane balloon wheels, antenna tower, robotic arm, gripper attachment, and excavator attachment. All of these parts come together to form a complete mechanical system. The chassis is flat and triangular in shape and made of square aluminum tubing and is designed to be strong, rigid, and lightweight. Built into the frame are three rotating connection points for the suspension arms. A rocker pivot suspension system is used which involves three sets of rigid suspension arms that each have two wheels and two motors attached. Each arm set can rotate freely about a single point. This style of suspension ensures that all six wheels remain on the ground as the arms adjust to landscape contours. The six polyurethane balloon wheels provide compliance to the rover's design, providing some protection from bumps. Each is outfitted with a custom tread that increases traction in sandy and other loose terrain. Custom designed steel mounting plates are welded to the shafts of the gearboxes to improve in conversion of torque from the motor to the wheel. The robotic arm is a three degree of freedom mechanism, which includes turret rotation, shoulder rotation, and elbow rotation. The end of the arm is designed for multiple end attachments, such as the excavator shown here. The gripper attachment is made from acrylic for ease of fabrication and is attached to two wrist servos. The servos provide two degrees of freedom, wrist tilt and wrist rotation. The gripping motion is actuated by a motor driving a lead screw that pulls the fingers closed or open. The excavator attachment uses a linear actuator to open and close a small steel scoop. This essentially turns the robotic arm into a backhoe style excavator. Once soil is collected in the scoop, it can be dropped into the detachable soil sample kit, which houses the necessary instruments to measure soil pH and humidity in the container where soil will rest. Notice the division in the container that separates the sample into a wet test area and a dry test area. The electrical system is custom designed with two separate fully functional control subsystems for maximum reliability, dedicated real-time task scheduling for RC grade actuation, and full HD IP camera visual feedback. The control path consists of the base station, which communicates with the rover through wireless communications and networking, 
with output commands executed by the primary drive and ARM control systems, the sensory system that returns information to the base station, and the rover's internal power system. Operators at the base station input commands to the rover using a USB Xbox 360 controller. Communications are accomplished through a two-way server client process. Signals are transmitted, received, routed, and broadcasted wirelessly via the 2.4 GHz Ubiquiti Rocket M2 transceiver. This network allows 100 megabits per second or greater data traffic. Receiving and transmitting UDP packets through Ubiquiti, the rover interfaces with the network via a WizNet 5500 series module. Cypress PSOC 4 series microcontrollers extract and parse the data from the WizNets. The chassis PSOC controller handles the wheel and camera gimbal PWM commands, which drive the motors via Castle Creation's Mamba series ESCs. The Mambas receive the PWM pulses and actuate the brushed DC motors on the wheels. Each side of Mambas are synced together so that one signal controls all three wheels for a given side. The ARM control system also has a dedicated PSOC controller that delivers signals to Mambas and servos that actuate the joints of the arm. The wrist joints are actuated by Dynamixel servos. The rover is equipped with six cameras, three HD IP cameras, and three lower resolution NTSC cameras. These cameras send their signals through IP video encoders. Camera information, along with the GPS and soil sensor data stored in PSOCs, is transmitted back through the Ubiquiti. Primary visuals are given by two cameras mounted high on a pan-tilt gimbal, one HD IP camera, and a backup NTSC camera. Another HD IP camera will be attached to the arm to provide clear visuals of equipment servicing instructions and arm functions. A small NTSC camera will be mounted inside the hand to provide further clarity to the location of the grip in relation to objects. An NTSC camera will be mounted low on the chassis site to view soil excavation sites, and a wide-angle HD IP camera will be mounted at the top of the 2-meter rover antenna to look down on the entire rover and its surroundings. Five 12-volt, three-cell lithium polymer batteries rated for 100 amps are used to power the rover. A power switch connects them to the fuse box, which regulates the power supply to the rover's electrical components. In the case that signal is lost with a ubiquity link, or in an emergency, a fully functional backup system has been prepared. It uses an RC controller configured to communicate with an alternate set of PSOCs through a Dragon Link long-range RC system. The analog NTSC cameras remain functional and communicate with the base station through NTSC transmitters and receivers. The rover's ability to perform the equipment servicing task will now be demonstrated. With the gripper closed, it can be used to push objects. Combined with the wrist tilt, this allows the gripper to manipulate a light switch. Or it can be used to open and close ball valves. Careful manipulation of the other arm joints helps complete this maneuver. The gripper can close over certain objects, such as valve handles. Combined with the wrist rotation, Gate valves such as this one can be opened through multiple passes of the gripper. This valve was opened from a stiff closed position. The gripper attachment is also used in the astronaut assist task, which will be shown next. During the competition, the operator drives the rover to a predetermined location given by GPS coordinates. The base station can pre presently receive and report the GPS position of the rover on a map. Here, the rover approaches a small tool to simulate this task. The operator carefully manipulates the arm and wrist to position the gripper around the tool. In the competition, the operator will use the rover's arm-mounted cameras to perform this maneuver. The gripper closes on the tool, and the arm and wrist are moved to lift the tool off the ground.
The operator then drives the rover to a specific location to deliver the tool. The tool is dropped by opening the gripper. When the rover is required to deliver large objects with handles, such as the container shown, a hook attached to the rover arm is used. The operator positions the rover next to the container. The arm is manipulated until the hook catches the handle. This particular container weighs 3.5 kilograms. The rover can then deliver the container by carrying it or dragging it. For the soil sample return task, the gripper attachment is removed and the excavator attachment and soil sample kit are installed. The rover is driven to a certain location based on the judgment of the operators. The arm then acts as a backhoe style excavator as it is dropped to ground level. The scoop then collects soil. In the competition, multiple digging passes are made to ensure that the necessary 5 cm depth requirement is met. This will be proven with the picture taken by the rover cameras of the scoop testing in the freshly excavated hole, with a known reference length shown. The turret rotates the sample back to the soil sample kit where it can be dropped into a measuring device. Finally, the terrain traversal abilities of BYU's Mars rover are demonstrated. The base station operator is seen here with the Xbox controller and laptop. The rover is responding to the joystick commands given by the operator. The test begins as the rover drives away from the base station. It continues to function out of line of sight communications of the operator. The rover's hill climbing abilities are tested here. Notice how well it climbs this grade that contains varying slopes and loose rocks and soil. Although the arm remained mounted for these test videos to increase difficulty, the entire arm apparatus will be removed during this competition event. The hill is much higher than can be discerned from this video. The rocker pivot motion of the suspension arms can be observed as the rover traverses uneven terrain. All six wheels remain on the ground during these maneuvers. Again, these maneuvers are performed out of line of sight of the operator, who is using the visual feedback displayed on the laptop to drive the rover. Because the drive control system of the rover uses only two control banks for the wheels, the rover turns using skid steering methods. Notice how on loose surfaces it can turn in place. To simulate a half meter climb, the rover approaches this large cement pipe. The rubber treads of the wheels also provide traction on hard surfaces such as this. Notice again how the rocker pivot suspension motion assists in climbing this obstacle. The BYU Mars rover team looks forward to demonstrating this rover in the 2015 University Rover Competition.